What's good YouTube? Target here and welcome to another episode of Design and Manage, my City Skylines and Modded Let's Play series. And here we have it guys, episode 30. I would never imagined I would get this far and especially not with all the support that you guys have been giving me throughout the past couple of months. And for that I want to express my deepest thanks to you. And what a perfect way for us to celebrate this event with me being sick. Yeah, that's right. If you cannot notice by my voice, I am actually sick. But anyway, I will do my best in recording this episode. And without further ado, I'm gonna explain to you what I have in mind for today's episode. We're back in our downtown area. On the last episode, I have built this coastal area that you see right over here with all these um, uh, restaurant piers and uh, floating cafes, which I think they're not quite all right, especially with these terraform landscapes over here. And today, what I think we're gonna do is um, optimize our district for a better income. One thing that I haven't exploited in this game to its fullest potential is actually policies. As you can see over here, I have some uh, policies already applied. I have the smoke detector distribution to the central park, and I also have some leisure and um, tourism specialization districts in some areas of the city. But I think we can apply some more policies to increase our main income. Our income right now is at about 7.5 to 8k per week, depending on the season of the year, and also if there's a death wave or not. So let's see what it can do and how much we can increase the income with just policies. This is how I have my downtown area zoned in. I have the coastal area zoned with commercial. The central area is mostly offices and this part over here next to the highway is residential. One policy that I can start applying right off the bat are these uh, city planning policies. I have the big business benefactor, which will pretty much double the sales of all commercial activities with uh, the downside of increasing the upkeep per building by 4 cents. Despite not having ever used these policies, I have heard that your income will desperately drop when you first apply them, but will soon raise up. I am also assuming that by doubling the revenue or by doubling the sales, they mean that they will actually double their activity, which means that we'll have double the traffic that these buildings produce. Given the fact that I have a very capable traffic network with a very well planned out road layout, I think we can support those changes. But that's something that you should keep in mind if you want to apply this policy to your city. So what I'm going to do is actually pause the simulation and I'm going to go to each district individually and I'm going to apply the policy. So the Kite Detment Lights is basically a leisure district but is zoned with identity so I'm going to apply the Big Business Benefactor. Because this is a leisure specialization district I'm not really sure if which one I pick over here either the small business or the big business uh, matters. So I think I'm just going to apply both for the sake of it and I am going to do the same in the uh, Martin Van Hick talks. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna apply the small business and big business as well because this is also a leisure specialization district. I am gonna select the Mr. Sir downtown and because this is mostly high density, I'm gonna apply the big business benefactor and the dashboard ferry will have again the big business benefactor and the same for the Wolp downtown. Okay, so I have applied the commercial policies to all the districts in the downtown area. Uh, we are now making at about 7.6k. I'm going to resume the simulation. I'm going to let the game adjust to these new changes. And we're going to see how our budget develops. And here we go. Alright guys, so I'll let the game run for a while and look at our income. We are now at 13.5k. There was a point where I was actually at 15k, which was pretty awesome. And uh, by looking at the city, I don't think the traffic issues have gotten worse than what they actually were. I think the city is running pretty smoothly, uh, even with these new changes. Look at this interchange, no traffic problems whatsoever. I can even go to this view and check out if we have any problems. We seem to have this area over here, which is no big deal. It's mostly because of the buses. Uh, this off point is also... Yeah, we seem to be very okay in this area. This off point is always a, 
a troublesome part, but it seems to be no problem whatsoever. But yeah, I think I'm gonna keep these changes, our income increased quite significantly, so yeah, I will consider that as a good management decision. Another thing that I would like to touch on is actually taxes. Taxes are basically related to land value, so the higher your land value, the higher taxes uh, your citizens can sustain. As you can see, we have a pretty high land value in most of the part of the city, mainly in our residential area. As you can see, the land value is at its maximum level over here, uh, in here, and also in this location near the highway. So I think we can actually raise the taxes a bit more. Now, the maximum value that your citizens can allow when you have no land value whatsoever is 12. So in every city, we, you should actually start with 12% in tax value. But uh, do you guys want to know a secret that I only found out about 5 minutes ago? Look at this. I have my taxes set to 9%. Uh, yeah, these are basically the default settings and I have never uh, in my life uh, during this gameplay remembered to set this up to 12%. So I've basically been wasting a lot of money. I've done this with a low density as soon as I've unlocked taxes with the first Malson, but I've completely forgot to touch this. So I'm just gonna raise them up to the minimum value that citizens can tolerate. We'll see how that will uh, affect our income and I'll meet you back in a bit to see if we can increase taxes even more. Mmm, can you smell the green? And I'm not talking about trees, I'm talking about the good old banknotes. Look at all this income guys. And this was all just by setting the taxes from 9% to 12% just by correcting a noob mistake. But now that we got that out of the way, uh, I believe we can increase taxes even more, especially in the residential part, because we have this area fully developed with the uh, maximum land value possible. So what I think I'm gonna do is um, max out the taxes in this area, and I will do that by coming over here to the taxation tab and apply the tax raise for both residential, commercial and also offices. And I am pretty sure, or I, at least I will believe that residential will tolerate this tax raise because the land value in that area is super high, but I'm not that sure about commercial and offices. So what I'm gonna do is actually apply the policy to every single district. And if any of those complain, I will simply remove them. I will remind you once again that this is uh, intrinsically related to your land value. So if you don't have a high enough land value, it is possible that you cannot raise your taxes higher than 12%. So that's something to keep in mind. But anyway, I am going to go to the policies of the Mr. Uh, Sir Downtown. And given the fact that this is all uh, high density, I'm going to apply the tax raise for high density, the tax raise for high density commercial, and the tax raise for offices and I'm gonna do the same to every single district in this downtown area. Alright guys, this is a moment of truth. I've applied the policies to every single district in this downtown area and I'm gonna resume the simulation and I will see if they actually complain. So here we go. Oh no, look at this guys. It seems that my plan did not work, so let me just check out what on earth is going on. Uh, yeah, this is mainly residential complaining. Uh, taxes are too high, and not residential, everybody is complaining. Except for these people over here. What district is this? The Dashboard Ferry Park, but not just the Dashboard Ferry Park. It's actually this specific part the dashboard ferry park. Everybody else seems to be complaining. And uh, what I think I can do is disable the, the tax raise policy to every single district and go back down, but keep it on this district over here. So I'm gonna do that right away and I'll meet in a couple of seconds. 
Alright, I've disabled the tax race policies to every single district except for the Dashboard Ferry Park. And it seems that it is going out pretty good. Uh, no buildings are complaining, with the exception of these ones near the shore. But given that they are um, only three buildings out of uh, a couple dozen, or a couple hundred, I don't know, uh, I think I'm gonna ignore these complaints and we're gonna keep the tax race policy in the central district. I even think it's because of this central park that uh, these buildings can tolerate such a high land value. But overall I am pretty satisfied with what we have accomplished. We managed to raise our income quite significantly. We boomed to at about 35k but then the income stabilized and it's now at about 21k which is pretty okay, I'm okay with that. And uh, there is actually something else that I could do to uh, raise the land value, which is to convert all of these residential buildings that you see over here to high-tech housing buildings. High-tech houses basically raise the land value of the area they're on for a trade-off of a slightly higher maintenance cost per building. But I think that small boost in land value is enough for us to be able to boost the taxes without uh, people complaining. So that is something that we should try on. I am going to select the Mr. Sir downtown. I'm going to go to the policies and I'm going to apply the high tech housing. I am going to go to let's see which other districts have houses in them. We have the dashboard ferry park, which we can also apply the high tech housing. And finally, the Wolp uh, district. And there you go, I take housing as well. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, see if there are any changes to the land value, even though it's going to be very hard to distinguish, because it's already a very bright, bright green. Alright guys, did you notice the small boost in land value in the short time lapse? Uh, I think that small boost is going to be enough for us to raise the taxes uh, and have citizens not complain. So I'm going to pause the simulation because I want to check how this thing works out. I'm going to come over, over here and apply the tax raise in this district as well. And uh, I think we can... Yeah, let's apply to everything back again and see if that is enough for people to stop complaining. And uh, I don't know guys, let's check it out. Oh, come on. I was so hopeful. Let's actually check it out and see who is complaining. So, it seems that... Yeah, everybody's complaining. Residential, offices, and... Uh, commercial as well. That's very unfortunate. Oh well, I tried. Let's uh, take away the tax raise policies as well as the high-tech housing and put everything as it was. Okay, I took away the high-tech housing and the tax raise uh, in these areas over here and it seems that we are uh, in the middle in, of the beginning of a death wave. Our budget is even suffering the consequences. I think I'm gonna put the game on 3 speed and let this death wave pass around and in the meanwhile I will show you some clips of what is happening in our city with nighttime and also dynamic weather activated. So enjoy! Alright guys, two days have passed since my last recording and I'm a bit better from my cold and hopefully that will show up in my voice. Uh, some time has passed and the death wave has already passed away 
I've also uh, placed an additional geothermal heating plant because we were in the demand for it and I've also applied the industrial space planning to the bullet boy farms and the small business enthusiast to the Arishduta Square on the small island that we had. But now I think it's time to move on to other parts of the city so let's just do it. So I figured out we could develop the northern part of the city a bit more, which is the most recent part of the city. And one thing that I uh, haven't done yet is uh, make these roads a bit better. Right now they are just regular roads. And I think I want to make a, a road with cycling lanes on this road over here that crosses the entire um, northern part of the city. And then we'll have a nice connection to this um, pedestrian, not pedestrian, this cycling road, which will be quite efficient in managing traffic. And I think, let me just come over here, I think I will want to upgrade this road all the way until the next road with cycling lanes, which uh, it doesn't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be any here. Well, we'll just connect it until this point. That's, that's going to be fine for now. And um, something else that we can work on is this um, two-lane road with trees. And I think I want to uh, make this type of roads wrap around the entire uh, city. Not the entire city, but this entire segment. So I'm going to upgrade all of this. And we'll develop the area up until this avenue, just for the time being. And I want to do the same at about here. So let's just upgrade everything. Okay, why can I not upgrade this segment? Let me try to do this again. Let me just demolish it and rebuild it. And sure, everything seems to be fine now. Did I mess up any bus line? No, I don't think so. Yeah, that's good. I am also going to upgrade uh, this road that wraps around the sunken park because I already know that this is going to be uh, wrapped around with this type of road so I'm just doing that right off the bat so I don't have to worry about that later and yeah that is that is fine for now maybe I can just uh, take up this avenue and decorate it with some trees as well perfect now that we got that out of the way, uh, we can go ahead and zone some more buildings. So we have some demand for offices and commercial. And I think I'm going to start with offices because I already know where I want to put them. And I will want this entire thing to become offices right along this avenue and also this road near the highway. And I will also want this entire block right next to this perpendicular avenue to be offices. And everything in the middle will be residential. Our new office buildings are developing uh, very well. These ones are already at level 2 even. And um, we still have a lot of demand for offices, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and zone the entire thing. So I'm just going to grab this and zone all of it. And I think I can counter the counter demand with some residential as well. All right, let's check it out. Alright, there you go. I took advantage of this opportunity to also fill up this entire part of the city. I thought it would be a nice time to finally fill uh, and complete the entire uh, part next to the highway. So I've went ahead and done that. And uh, yeah, this is developing uh, pretty well. Uh, of course, I will need to put some parks in this location, of course, and also work on the services. Uh, I think I am going to put some bus routes on this episode right away just to complete this part and don't worry about public transportation in the future. But before that, there is an observation that I would like to make which is the fact that we haven't had 
a random disaster for about uh, a lot of episodes. So uh, I don't know what's going on, I've already increased the frequency of the disasters. Uh, I'm not cheating, I promise, I really do have disasters turned on. Uh, I've heard and I've read about it that it might be bugged. So um, I don't know, I think I gotta do a bit more research on that and I'll try to reactivate the random disasters if they are indeed bugged and they are disabled. But anyway, that was just a small observation that I wanted to make. For now, let's just keep working on this uh, district. I want to complete this area with some bus lines that will lead this entire district to this particular metro line, so I'm just gonna do that. Instead of making unnecessary additional bus lines, I think I'm just gonna expand the existing lines that we have, so I'm gonna just delete these tops and I'm gonna drag this top as close to this intersection as possible because I want the buildings in this avenue to be able to cross this road and grab the bus stop right over here and uh, I think I'm gonna add another stop let's see probably over here yeah that's good and now we have a very good line that covers the entire part of this city and now I'm gonna do the same on this side I'm gonna create a line that starts at about over here right next to the pedestrian path the pedestrian path drop off I'm gonna make a stop right next to the bus station or to the metro station came at about through the same uh, uh, stops than the other line and I can connect everything at about over here and now I can just make another one that goes a counterclockwise like this perfect all right the bus lines for this area are pretty much taken care of now we should move on to other things that I want to take care of one of them is uh, this network over here with these roundabouts with these oval roundabouts that I like so much and it's so characteristic of our city uh, however in this case they are not as efficient as they could be so if I activate the arrows you can pretty much see that the roundabouts are unnecessary. For example, on this roundabout over here, uh, there is only one possible way for cars to go, which is out of the roundabout. So in this connection, they can only go to this side and in this connection to this side. So because traffic is not crossing from one direction to the other, there is no need for a roundabout. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna pause the simulation. I'm gonna delete this entire thing and I'm gonna connect it with a normal road if I can but of course that the game would not let me do some basic stuff maybe if I delete the tunnel and connect it directly all over again all right the tunnel is connected back again so now I just have to convert these roads into one-way roads just like it was before all right perfect and now we have a diverging connection and on this part over here is pretty much the same but instead of having a diverging connection we actually have a converging connection where uh, cars are flowing from both sides until this tunnel to get out of the city uh, so I'm just gonna again delete the roundabout we do not need it also going to delete the tunnel for now and perhaps we can make an interesting connection over here let's just check it out all right that seems pretty good now let's just rebuild the tunnel before i forget so i will have to delete this and just make sure i go to the first furthest way possible before it tunnels down uh, I have this pathway interfering, so I'm not gonna bother too much with that. Alright, tunnel is built, direction is correct. Now I just have to correct this through these roads. Alright, and I think that turns out very well. Now I should just upgrade it to a one-way road and make it converge to this tunnel. 
uh, I probably should even convert this tunnel to a one-way, sorry, to a two-lane tunnel because I have traffic coming from either side. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna do it like this. All right, perfect. Okay, I've upgraded the entire tunnel to a two-lane highway or two-lane off-ramp. And before I resume the simulation, I just want to upgrade these roads to uh, some roads with trees. I think it will look much better. So let's adjust to that and over here as well. And now let's resume a simulation and see how this works. Alright, perfect. We still have very little traffic flowing around this area, so we need to wait a few more episodes until I develop this area a bit more to decide if this is a traffic efficient network or not. But anyway guys, that's going to be it for today. Once again, I want to thank every single one of you for the support that you have showed throughout the last uh, 30 episodes. Hopefully we'll have 30 more episodes to go before we end this series. I hope you have enjoyed this video, if so please give it a like, it really helps out my channel. Also don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow the development of this city. And finally if you want to connect with me on social media don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching and as always have fun. Peace.